Consider for a second, if you will, the culture that existed in the United States during the 1950s. A polite, repressed class of people that tried their very best to hide everything that was wrong with their society. Sex, drug use, and deviations from the standard model of thinking that existed at the time were all considered taboo. These things are now openly discussed around most first world countries. But somewhere out of that culture of self-repression came a new culture, a counterculture, a response to what was once the status quo. Suddenly, people started openly experimenting with their sexuality, drugs, open-minded thinking, and all sorts of other previously taboo subjects. But that resistance to the current culture is always there. Political correctness is a culture of sorts, and it has been met with a strong level of resistance. People are rejecting political correctness, and the desire to go against it is pushing those who are already PC towards more and more extremist views as a means of preserving their culture. And that reaction by those who are PC triggers an equal and opposite reaction by the anti-PC counterculture. Through this mechanism of social action, both sides seem to push each other into more and more extremist versions of their previously held political views, thus generating a more extremist society altogether. But the counterculture phenomenon doesn't simply occur at the political level. It spreads far and wide into all kinds of other subcultures. Take the internet, for example. About one to two years ago, Jordan Peterson became a beloved anti-PC figure. A subculture was created around his ideas, but it wasn't long before a counterculture came in to try and subdue the Peterson culture. He was accused of being a charlatan and of being someone who uses his intellect to create a false view of what the Bible is really about another example of a counterculture being created around a culture. Look at the amount of adoration that music artists get when they first blow up. Then look at the reactions of people a few months or a few years later. At some point there will be a backlash to all of the positive adoration that person has been receiving. You might be saying that this is not as complex as a counterculture, that this is just a way of explaining the fact that there will always be some people in agreement with something and some other people who disagree with that something. But this isn't the case. A counterculture happens at a cultural level and is a reaction to a previous ideology. It creates its own culture with its own distinct ideas that differ on various points with the original culture. It is a group philosophy and something that has its own set of ideas that is commonly known and believed by members of the group. For example, being okay with doing psychedelics is an opinion that many people have, but it is not a counterculture. It is just a counter opinion. It is simply a point of view on one particular idea that stems from previously popular culturally believed ideas that are its opposite. That is very different from the 1960 counterculture, which held various ideas in contradiction with the main culture before it. Countercultures can be seen as a response to almost any culture or subculture. They are a way for society to reflect on its current culture and decide whether it's a group philosophy worth upholding, a societal system of change that begs to differ with any status quo. And it's at this point that you must ask yourself, which side am I on?